Hey, have you ever considered a lifestyle business? You know, where you swing from the hammock, MacBook on your lap? Well, today's guest isn't quite there yet, but she has escaped the cubicle and is now running a very cool virtual legal practice. Yeah, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed. You, you're a motivated business owner. Oh, yeah. Ready to crank out some great marketing that is going to build that baby of yours into the empire it deserves to be. If you are a new listener to the show, we welcome you into the tribe with open arms. Well done for finding it. Hey, today's show, lovingly brought to you by Key Person of Influence, the world's leading business accelerator program for business owners wanting to become thought leaders in their industry. And they're giving away a free copy of their Amazon bestseller over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. That's a free hard copy, by the way. We're also made possible by Audible. They've got 180,000 titles on their shelf. You can have one for free over at audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. Hey, big show. Yep. I chat with this lawyer, right? who has created a very cool lifestyle business following a retrenchment when she was 32 weeks pregnant. So there's a bit of kind of cubicle escapee stuff going on there. There's living the dream, starting a business that she loves. Great interview. Stay tuned for that. I help a listener identify their passion and I have a motivational marketing quote of the week about the power of just one customer. Yep, plenty of marketing gold dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Join the Small Business Big Marketing community and have your marketing questions answered by other motivated business owners, including Timbo, over at crankmymarketing.com. Righto, so I get this question on the email from a Luke, a Luke McEnany. He says, hey, Timbo, love the podcast. Thanks, Luke. I'm a fairly young bloke. I'm a sparky by trade. Looking to escape the cubicle. Well, you're not really in a cubicle if you're a sparky, but I know what you mean. And start my own business. I'm an MBA. Hmm. Smart sparky. (laughs) Say that three times fast. So I have some understanding of running and managing a business. Well, do you? Hey, MBA. Good theory. I've never done one. Couldn't do one. Not smart enough. But you've got to run a business to know how to run a business, if you know what I mean. I'm very driven. I digress then. I'm very driven, says Luke. I just cannot find an idea or field which I'm really passionate about. They don't teach that in the MBA, Lukey. What would you suggest to somebody who really wants to start a business but just can't generate any ideas? Oh, matey. All right, let me give you five ways of finding your passion so that you can find a business that you will love. Number one, Luke, I don't believe you're not passionate about anything. Think again, mate. Watch your language. Watch how you speak to yourself. We all need to do this. You'll be passionate about something. That's not true. All of us are passionate about something. Some of us have got to think harder and dig deeper to find it. So there you go, Luke, tip one, dig deep. Number two, ask yourself what annoys you in your day-to-day life that you're unable to find, wait for it, an amazing solution for, right? Not just a satisfactory solution, but what is annoying you that you can't find an amazing solution for? Get as niche as you like. There'll be a business idea in that. Number three tip for you, young Luke, with the MBA. What can you do better than anyone else? That's a good question to ask. There'll be things. You know what they are. Lose the humility 
and acknowledge there are some things that you just do really well. Follow-up question to that, Luke. Number four, what do your friends and family tell you that you're really good at? I would like my friends and family to say that I'm a fantastic singer because if they did, I'd then start a singing career. But that ain't happening anytime soon. But you get the gist, Luke. And number five, it's another question, but I can't, I can't tell you what you're passionate about. I can only pose questions to you that'll help you uncover it. What is something you believe that almost nobody agrees with you on? Hmm? It's a little bit cryptic. Have a think about that one. I'll read it again. What is something you believe that almost nobody agrees with you on? Hmm? Like that question? Lukey, the reality is, mate, you are passionate about things. You've just got to uncover them. To uncover them, you've got to ask yourself the right question. If and when you do uncover it and you put that MBA to work and you leave that sparky kind of thing behind that you're doing, let me know, mate. I would love to hear that you have found your passion. And everyone else listening, I hope you're living yours. Support for this show comes from Key Person of Influence, the world's leading business accelerator program for those wanting to be an industry thought leader. Their five-step KPI method teaches you how to nail your pitch, publish content, productize your offer, raise your profile, and partner with performers. I asked co-founder Glenn Carlson, what's with the pee fetish? <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose it is a bit of a fetish, isn't it? But I guess we're just a bit obsessed, you know, fetish. Obsessions, we're, we're, we're just business geeks, mate. We believe there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur, and we're all in. We are just all in. And if we find best practices and ideas as a result of what's working for our clients all around the world, we just want to bring it to people. And so far, the best framework that we've found to be able to do that to really accelerate that entrepreneurial journey in the shortest time is the five P's. So, mate, get in on the fetish. KPI, where fetishes rule. For a free hard or audio copy of their Amazon bestseller, visit keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Oh, and a little warning. Don't read it before bed. You just won't sleep. Righto, team, let's get stuck into today's guest. It is a lady by the name of Sarah Bartholomews. She's the founder, CEO, and practicing lawyer at the virtual law firm, yeah, virtual law firm, U Legal. So here's the, here's the thing. At 32 weeks pregnant with her second child, Sarah was made redundant at her job in a large public company. And she'd been working in the legal industry for like more than 10 years and saw that lawyers weren't very good at the old work-life balance thing. So she started U Legal, which is an entirely virtual law firm where clients are able to get advice 24-7 across Australia and around the world. It's an interesting model for a very conservative industry. She talks about how the idea came to be, how she got it to market, some of the challenges, and a whole lot more. I started off by asking Sarah... <laughs> and freaking her out a little bit. When she's driving alone, what singer or band is on high rotation? Anything by Beyonce. You're a bit of a Beyonce girl. Love her, and she's really been a business mentor to me as well in that everything she does is amazing. I love her. Interesting. What are we talking, uh, XO, Crazy in Love? All that Crazy in Love, you know, 90s gold. 90s gold. I'm an, I'm an 80s child. You're clearly a 90s child. <laughs> Love it. What, what's the um, – tell me more about Beyonce being a business mentor. What aspect – I don't know enough about her uh, to know what influence she could have. I feel like she – if ever I have an issue in my business life, like I just channel her. That is really interesting. I do the same thing with Jamie Oliver. <laughs> People will be listening going, oh, he's a couple of wackos. <laughs> Tell me more. Like, I, I, I get what you do. Um, mm. You kind of, do you ask yourself the question, what would what Beyonce do? What would Beyonce do? do? Wow. And? It just helps me somehow get through difficult conversations or difficult calls. Have you studied Beyonce? This is not where I was expecting this conversation to go, but <laughs> yes, I, I love her. <laughs> hey, welcome, welcome to the Small Business Pig Marketing Show. You know, I have studied her and um, 
follow her, not stalkerish, yeah. but you know, enjoy reading about what she's up to. Well, I just think there's a really big learning there. Uh, sorry to take you down a rabbit hole that you didn't expect, but seriously, there is often the learnings are in the least expected places. And you know, for me, Jamie Oliver, the way he presents, the way he manages his brand, his personality, the way he educates yet entertains. For me, these are all learnings that I've got by studying him and yeah, not stalking him. Although I have hit him up on Twitter a couple of times. Ah. Have, have you tried to make contact with Beyonce? No, I hmm. haven't. But now that you say that, maybe I should. <laughs> there you go. You'd be, su- you'd be surprised. I mean, she would be one busy person, but you never exactly. know. You do never know. Now, Sarah, more serious side of things, uh, working for a large public company, 32 weeks pregnant, made redundant. How'd yeah. That, how'd that go? It wasn't a huge surprise. The subsidiary of the company that I was working for, that was my internal client, was sold. So it was more the timing in my life. It was my second pregnancy. So I already had an 18 month at home. Uh, it was just a little bit of a surprise mm-hmm. life-wise, I guess. Bad timing. Yeah, not great timing. You kind of knew it was coming. So I, I know, you know, there's a lot of cubicle escapees that listen to this show, Sarah. <laughs> so were you one of those people who was looking for a way out anyway? Not really. In fact, because I was pregnant, I'd been and knew that I was likely to lose my job. I had been interviewing for other jobs, but always admitting that I was pregnant and always coming second. Mm-hmm. Righto. So, um, did you then go? Okay. Well, uh, have the baby take time off as you would do and then plan to have something, a business of your own next? No, not exactly. It was all kind of luck and design at the same time, I guess. I got um, an opportunity from the new owners of the subsidiary that I'd sold to work for them as a contractor. They work in the manufacturing space, Mm. so they're not likely to be around for too much longer. They weren't taking on extra employees and they wanted me to work for them a couple of days a week. So I started that immediately after leaving my other job and worked for them um, two days a week, but over seven days. So I don't know, Tim, yeah, right. I haven't been pregnant before, so you don't know that sitting <laughs> down for long periods of time when you're 28, 38 weeks pregnant is tricky. So it was really great flexibility to be able to work just two hours a day or three hours a day yeah, during that period. I haven't been pregnant before, but I did have the man flu last week, Sarah, so... Um, yeah, you sort of know what it's I like. Saw, I, yeah, clearly, clearly <laughs> making friends with all my f- female listeners. So, okay, so you're back You're back doing something that you're enjoying uh, on a time, in a time frame that suits you. Yeah. But so where was the idea, where was that scratch that needed to be... Is, is it the itch that needed to be scratched? Yeah, I guess. So I had Nicola and took about six weeks off from working and then I worked um, for that same client while she was sleeping essentially after that for about four months. Mm-hmm. And I found during that time there were lots of other clients asking me to work for them and I was like, give me a break, I've got a three-month-old baby. Mm. Um, but after four or five months, I started saying yes to other clients because I loved the flexibility that I had. And I also thought if other people, as in clients, can see the benefit of this system, Mm -hmm. lower overheads so we don't need to charge as high rates as bigger law firms because we don't have the overheads, Um, I wanted other lawyers to have the freedom to be able to work that way as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Because often, and, and I want to shortly explain what you legal is and how you got it to market. But often, um, the, the cubicle escapees get to that point of going, "Oh, there's a business idea there. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, I reckon I could, I might be able to do that." But then it kind of gets swept under the carpet and ignored. What was your kind of um, motivation for actually going? You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to start an online legal service. I think that for me, I was lucky in the sense that I already had a revenue stream Mm. from working for this one client. So I just 
basically committed all of that to growing new legal to be able to give it to other lawyers and other clients. Yeah, love it. It's that I had the same thing leaving corporate many years ago mm. where I had that one client that kind of mm. cash flowed me into starting my own thing. It is, it is helpful. Doesn't mean you have to. No. There, there's people who are bigger risk takers than you and I. So hey, true. Hey, so you legal. That's what you started. Can you, what is it? Explain it. So it's an online law firm that has about 20 staff at the moment. There's 15 lawyers around Australia who provide corporate top-tier corporate commercial advice, transactional documents, dispute advice, but we don't do litigation um, to clients that need us. 20 staff? Because October 2013 was launched month, wasn't it? Yes, so well that done. was when it was just me and then you Legal was launched on the 1st of July last year. Wow, you've moved quickly. It's been a crazy ride. It's a business model that applies to so many industries, which quite excites me. Um, had you seen it being applied elsewhere or did you just go, you know what, I'm going to create this? No, you said before that you and I are both a little bit low risk. And so yeah. I was looking for a model where I didn't need to take on the overheads of a big office and lots of staff to be able to run the business. Um, and so it sort of developed one step at a time. What was the first step to getting you legal to market a- a- as, as a virtual business? Well, I think I think one of the first list listed goals was just to invest in a great website and a great brand. Mm -hmm. Um, And then from a marketing perspective, since the 1st of July last year, we've done a weekly blog, which goes out to about 700 people. I want to talk about that. Just hold that thought because what do you mean by um, a great brand? Do you mean um, like a visual identity or, or something more? Yeah, I think a visual, a visual identity and also what was really important to me was that people understood that U Legal wasn't a firm that was named after me, like a lot of law firms <laughs> yeah, are yeah. named after the partner. Like this wasn't about me, this was about my clients. So you refers to you, Tim, when you need mm-hmm. a consultancy agreement or mm-hmm. a terms and conditions. It's not named Sarah Legal. <laughs> On purpose. So the structure of you legal, okay, so you've got you've got 15 lawyers around the country. I guess the other five are kind of admin staff. How, how yes. do you, just trying to figure out how you build something like that. Are these, these people aren't on the payroll, I'm guessing? They... No, they consult, so they are paid for the time that they work. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the idea, and, and how do you find these people? Do they find you? Uh, initially, I found them through people that I knew. Um, like a lot of small businesses, I think, and more recently in the last six months or so, we've had to advertise for positions. There's a website called The Part-Time People here in South Australia that has been really helpful with connecting us with people who want to be able to work flexibly. Do do you feel like you've hit on something? I don't know. I feel like this is the Beyonce thing again. It's just such a roller coaster that it's impossible to know what direction it's ever going to go in. What's the roller coaster? Well, you know the squiggly line to success. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the straight one. You're not going up. You, you feel like you're going backwards, and that could be a key staff member leaving, or um, you know, a cash flow crisis. Because in growing quickly, you run out of money because you need to pay for things before you get paid, and so. I guess that's what I mean. It's it's not all easy sailing. No, no. Has there been a moment where you have really questioned it? Sometimes I'll have a crisis of confidence and just say, I'm going back to corporate. It's just so oh, much easier. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, who hasn't had that? Who's been in corporate now owns a small business? But now I feel like I've got all these people and clients relying on me as well, so that keeps me going. That's a big pressure. Is that what you say when you have those moments? And I used to have those moments. It'd be so much easier to go back into that big advertising agency and mm. sit in my mahogany office. Um, you, do you really just say I've got this kind of pressure of clients and staff? That- but I don't feel like it's pressure as a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I don't actually think there's anything as su- – like no such thing as pressure. It's it's all in your mind. So, like, I love what I'm doing mm-hmm. overall. It's not 
ever just something I'm going to give up. What did the, uh, the st- I had Clarissa Raywood, the happy fam- family lawyer on uh, a few weeks ago and she referred yes. to the stuffy law profession because, you know, the happy family lawyer, you can't refer to yourself like that. Um, <laughs> you've challenged the category big time. I mean, yeah. this is really going against the grain of what your industry, uh, how your industry does business. Have you had any kickback? I think, well, one of our values is fresh, so... We provide a collaborative approach to give our clients and our staff a different coloured lens to view the profession. As you say, it's very precedent-bound. It's not um, not used to disruption, I guess is the right word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I, we haven't really had any pushback. Um, well, you live in a virtual world. You're not going to, uh, you're not going to courts and eyeballing old, crusty old lawyers who go... <laughs> We still go to court. Right. So we, we've had some non-contentious litigation that we've worked in, so where all of the clients generally agree but we do need to go to court. Um, but, yeah, there hasn't, there hasn't been any hmm. um, pushback. In fact, we've got a lot of clients that are lawyers that use us either for extra resourcing or um, referring matters to us and we'll refer matters back to them if we have things that we don't specialise in that they do. I'm guessing, and I could be wrong here, so feel free to challenge me. I'm sure you will. You're a lawyer. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I I look at a business like yours. I love the business model. I love the fact that you've escaped the cubicle. Um, That's all about you. For me, as a potential user, one of the questions that goes through my mind is, am am I going to get a quality level of legal advice beyond just... I don't even know what the words are, motherhood statements. Do you know what I mean? Like how do I know what I'm getting is really, really good? Yeah, so we're pitching at being a top-tier commercial law firm and and what I mean by that is we use all top-tier lawyers. So our staff have had between five and ten years' experience at law firms like Clayton Utes, Mintralison, JWS. So they're top-tier lawyers, They're just working in a flexible way. And and one thing that also means you do get amazing service is that they don't have 100 matters that they're working on. They have key clients that they work for and they turn things around in two weeks. We were waiting for a shareholders agreement from a client who was waiting for it from a big law firm and they waited four to five months Yeah, right. because they, they were distracted on other matters, whereas, you know, People don't wait more than two or three weeks for things with us and, and that's something that we're really proud of, turning things around quickly and being really responsive to our clients. I wonder whether, and I always can't help myself in these chats, Sarah, to offer some marketing advice. Please do. <laughs> um, so I've gone to your team section of your website. Um, I think it's wonderful, beautiful photos, um, uh, brief descriptions, yet good descriptions of each of your team members. I wonder whether... A short video introduction of each of those people would be even more effective in developing trust. Yeah, so I've done a video that should be up on the website later today. That's the first one of those, mm-hmm. um, just to explain what New Legal does. But that's an excellent idea. Thank See you very much. Uh, who in... else is up for it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, I reckon you're all in or you're all out, that kind of thing. And yeah. um, it's about just you – know, I, I just think in virtual in virtual businesses, we all have to work very hard at establishing trust and familiarity mm. and actually mm. humanising something that – or someone that is otherwise an email address or a Facebook page, you know what I mean? Yeah, hmm. definitely. Worth a look because, you, you, I mean, you, you're, you've embraced videos. Tell me your values. Of, uh, again, on your website, love the fact that you've stipulated four uh, values that underpin how you go about doing business. I see these sometimes and, you know, I've seen them in big corporations and often they're just, again, um, paid lip service. But you seem to live them. But they're, they're very unlegal. You've got unstoppable, <laughs> fresh, love your life and thoughtful. Hey, that's more yeah. like a, that's more like a gym. So we also want clients, I guess, who, who these values resonate with because it just seems to be so much easier when you're a value match with your team and also with your clients. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, 
Let's talk marketing. So one of the things that you do, you, you started to talk about your, your blogging. You yes. seem to be putting out a video sort of once a week as well. What, yeah, what, so what's working for you? About 10 weeks ago, we started doing the video version of the blog. Um, and, yeah, it's been – we've had great response from it. Um, it's tough for me, I guess. I don't know. You probably are much more familiar with talking to a camera, but um, it's – it's a new thing to get used to, I guess. Uh, you've pushed through it. I mean, you've created yeah. quite a few. Um, I hear it all the time. Uh, that's why I podcast and not do video. But um, mm. people say I've got a great head for podcasting, so I, I kind of <laughs> stick with that. But, you know, um, my, my view on that, here's the thing. W- what you've identified is that um, you, you're working with a, a marketing medium that allows you to publish media. Uh, in form of your, in your case, video, um, that requires you to put your head above the trench and mm. stand out from the crowd. In, and that's scary in itself. Um, you've got to look down the barrel of a camera. You think people are judging how you look, how you speak. And you're kind of saying you know a thing or two about this legal area. Yeah? True. And, and all that is scary. My, my response to people who, and, and I do a little bit, I do a bit of this in my keynote where we get, we get everyone to do a video and then debrief it. People go, well, you know, they come up with all those things. My thing is like, it's not about you. It's about yeah. the people who are going to be watching this video that you are helping. Yeah. So be yourself embrace your nervousness, your uncertainty, your, you know, the pimple on your nose that you might have, you know, get over it because it's about them, not you. That's my kind of standard response. I know you haven't got a pimple on your nose right now. but (laughs) (laughs) So you're going to keep doing it? I think so. I've got another round uh, being planned just with intellectual property of advice, which seems to touch every area of business and it's important to get right what we say to clients is we want to future-proof your business. We don't want you to have disputes. A lot of my team started in litigation and we don't want to go back there. Nice. Just with video, um, how do you literally physically do it? Have you got your iPhone on a tripod in front of you? Yeah, I do it with an iPad on a tripod. Brilliant. That's it? Yeah, yeah. What's in your my planning? bedroom, it's the, light, it's, the br- it's the brightest room in the house. I love it. I love it. Good um, on you. So planning wise, we write scripts for them. So have you got an auto cue or well, are you? Well, I had been memorising them yep. until this week's one is the first one that I found a teleprompter app and I've been using that. I'd so lose I it. So I can do them for a little bit longer. I, I reckon, oh, look, it's horses for courses, but, again, that teleprompter is going to remove an element of your personality, you know. Look at look at Anchorman. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, he can't read anything that's not on the teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, though. I mean, don't, I, I, don't stop. Um, I know, again, a lot of people who embark on this kind of video strategy or podcasting or whatever it is, they kind of – they do their first 10 and then go, oh, I'm not getting enough views or no one's yeah. mentioning. It's like this stuff's a, mar- a, a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. What other marketing do you do? Uh, well, I was telling you yesterday I've written a book. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah, it's for directors of not-for-profits through to small proprietary limited companies through to public companies. It's called How to Avoid a Fall from Grace, Legal Lessons for Directors. Nice short title. A lot of war. Well, <laughs> well yeah, that's the publisher. They, they um, require so you, long, long you, titles. <laughs> you, went, you went through a publisher? Yes. Okay. Uh, and how long ago was that? Oh, we've been working together for about four months and I've been writing the book since October last year. So it's a really long process. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's been great. It's a great topic to talk about and a lot of people are interested in it, in particular the personal liability side for directors. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know what it's done for my business yet because it hasn't been printed. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, uh, you know, the guys at the key person of influence who are a sponsor of this show talk about it as being a glorified business card. And I think that's a great way of looking at a book because if you know, it's always that you're you're at the the boardroom table, your competitor's next to you, you're looking at a prospect, you hand over your book, competitor hands over the business card, guess who's looking better? 
you know. That's true. Yeah. I, that, the reason I wrote the book is because I read the key person of influence book. So, and it said you have to write a book. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love it. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My excuse is that I, I have written a book. I just wasn't overly joyed with it. So I published two podcasts a week. Um, you should have asked yourself what Beyonce would have called the book. I oh, know. Hey? That would have helped. Damn. Where were you when we were naming the book? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you didn't need me, you needed Beyonce. <laughs> hey, um, I have loved talking to you, Sarah. Thank you for sharing what I think is a wonderful journey out of the cubicle into your own business. Do you feel free? Sometimes. Oh, come on. <laughs> really? You're not, you're not quite I, there yet. I feel a lot more freedom around my time than I used to. Yeah, yeah. You can call your own shots a bit more, yeah? Yeah, can work from 6 until 10 on a Saturday and Sunday night and know that I've put in the hours. The crazy life of a young mother and small business owner. I know, that's right. <laughs> hey, uh, now people can go to ulegal.com.au. They can also email you at... Sarah at ulegal.com.au. Love it. And you got to hit Sarah up on Twitter, guys. Her Twitter handle is Sarah Jane. 79. So uh, now you know how old she is as well. Hey, thanks, Sarah, for being part of the Small Business Big Marketing Tribe. You're welcome. Anytime. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. What a lovely lady. Doing good things, good business model, both for her, her staff, and for her clients. Love business owners that think differently. I got my top three learnings from that chat. I hope you've got a few. Leave them in the show notes. More on that in a minute. But my top three learnings are brought to you by the very good folk at Key Person of Influence. You've got to grab their book over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Read it after this episode. Learning number one. Consider how you could apply Sarah's business model to your business. I love that virtual advice model. And it's certainly not just the uh, domain of legal. I reckon it could be applied to a lot of industries, maybe yours. Number two, see what it feels like and what effect it can have on how you do business by channeling someone you admire. I know, bit woo-woo. Doesn't need to be a celebrity, but asking the question of yourself, how would such and such go about it? It's a really good thing to ask. Hey, there's a bit of a kind of trend here in this episode. Ask the right questions. Tip number three, persevere at any marketing strategy you choose to implement. Too many give up too quickly. Sarah's embraced video. She's 10 or 12 videos in. She's not going to give up anytime soon. Not getting amazing traction yet, but she will. She'll get her eye in, so to speak. Don't give up too quickly. See it too often. Now, remember to hit Sarah up on Twitter, at SarahJane79, or head over to the show notes at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com, episode 259, and tell me what you think. There's some really good discussions going on in the show notes now that I kind of push it a little bit harder. I'm loving it. Hope you are too. Jim Rowan once said, one customer well taken care of could be more valuable than $10,000 worth of advertising. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reid. That's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Righto, that almost brings us to the end of episode 259. Plenty of marketing gold coming your way. Be sure to grab your free hard copy of the Key Person of Influence Amazon bestseller over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Grab your free audio book over at Audible while you're there. Plenty of the reading to do then. audibletrial.com forward slash SBBM. If you need a speaker for an upcoming event, then I'm all yours, hey? All yours. Check out timreed.com.au. If you want to surround yourself with other motivated business owners, then join the Small Business Big Marketing Forum over at crankmymarketing.com. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reed. You're not. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.